stitch it, all right? I have not yet fused on my flowers yet, but I did use the Apple stick and it's hanging there. And when I'm good to go, I will, right before it's time to stitch it, I will fuse it with my cordless Panasonic iron. But uh, this morning in getting ready for this, face masks, and I've been thinking about this. I've been thinking, you know, I could take a couple of my Johnny West face masks and sew a couple little, you know, beads or sparkles or something like that on it to make it a little bit more jazzy. And then I ran across this this morning. There is a, a designer in Africa. I think they said South Africa, but I'm not sure. And she, look at what she's done with her face mask. For every single outfit she has, she has a jazzy, jazzy face mask. And I just think that's absolutely incredible. And she had on this gold, you know, lame type full length dress. So it's absolutely perfect. Now I do want you to go get a pencil, you guys. Again, I'm gonna be going through a lot of stuff, but I also wanna differentiate three things that are going on right now, okay? And I realize that it can be confusing because I think I might have even answered some emails incorrectly. But first of all, these are my Monday, Wednesday, Friday, free so long based on the Sequoia pattern that I did initially out of Edita's fabric. And you can see it off to the side here. I'm redoing it now in a brighter spring bundle of fabric. If you're just jumping on board right now, you could download the pattern at thequiltshow.com. If you go to the front page, uh, yeah, the front page, it's right there. And I think it's $14.95 or something like that. Um, so that is the Monday, Wednesday, Friday, sew alongs, 10 o'clock Pacific time. All right, with me live, which is all the bumps and warts that go along with it. Then we also have what we're calling the master classes. The master classes are being aired in lieu of a guest, one guest on a whole show. So we've got so many shows. I think Ricky figured out like 330 or some, something like that. And we're not necessarily going and getting the best of the best because I don't want people to be insulted if we didn't pick theirs. But what we're doing is we're putting a compilation together for kind of like a one-stop shop. And it's interesting, having hosted all these shows, I have forgotten so much of this stuff. And it's fun because we go all the way back almost to the first season, if not the first season, and and all the way to now, and how much we've grown, and how much we've changed, and Alex and the big hair, and Alex uh, 13 years younger, as well as Ricky. We were babes then, okay? so. It's called Masterclass, and it rolls out just like a show every other week. We have two piecing masterclasses. I think the new next one is going to drop next Sunday. I don't know. I'm all confused with time. And then we have two applique masterclasses. And one of the things I'm going to be showing today will probably be in that applique masterclass. Basically, the team at TQS sat down and said, okay, who's, what are the aha moments that have stood out for us? And then we give it to Shelly, our producer, who I did a, um, a Skype with and at aired not that long ago. And then we give it to Rick and then he spins the magic on the whole thing. And he has a lot, he has the most problems of all when it comes to this because digitally everything has changed, all right? Technology, think about the last 13 years. So that's the master class. When you are a member, and remember you can become a six month member for $19.95, you have access to it as long as you're a paying member, all right? Then the third thing is we're going to have the tool school tomorrow, all right? You can go and pre-register for the tool school at thequiltshow.com. It's also there on the front page, John says, and if not, he's getting it on there right now. You can register through my Facebook, through TQS Facebook, and what it is, is it is equal to a special event that ordinarily you have to pay for at a sewing machine store. And I work with Judy Fredenberg, and she and I go through all of the Quilter Select 
toys that you can play with and how to better make your quilting experience. So for sure, you are gonna wanna have a pencil and paper tomorrow. A lot of information is going out. Now that is completely free. All you have to do is get on board. If I were you and I were going to attend, I would get on board before because everybody who pre-registers gets $10 off of shipping. And we're gonna have some great bundles, we're gonna have prizes, we're gonna give away throughout the course of tomorrow when it's live, three $50 gift certificates to shop for Quilter Select stuff. So it is 10 o'clock Pacific time, one o'clock East Coast, I'm not sure of London time, I didn't have time to Google that, but we can certainly, whatever country you're in, you can watch. Now, this I'm gonna put out the bummer news. The bummer news is, is if you do want things and you're out of, out of the 48 states even, right now, they're not, um, U, USPS is not letting us ship outside of um, the four, not even the United States, but outside of the big 48. And I apologize for that, but it's just, um, Corona, what are you gonna do about it? I mean, we gotta roll with this. We're rolling with the punches. The other thing I gotta see, this thing is blinding me. Okay, so this is what the tool school uh, looks like. So you just go and find it. I think it went out in our newsletter today too. So just go down the blog, click to register, and you'll save yourself 10 bucks. And again, I apologize for those who are outside of the 48. You know, it, it, it just is what it is. So my friend Janet Lyde, um, who lived in this area like forever and ever, has moved up to the Pacific Northwest and she is a part of um, my sewing and quilting experience. She sent me this picture, she's done, okay? She put it together, she's got quilting chops. And she sent me a picture of her quilt working with my last collection, a fabric probably forever and ever mirage and I gotta tell you people this absolutely made my heart sing look how she deviated from the instructions that I'm giving and I absolutely love that I mean look at the flower in the upper row kind of towards the left why didn't I think of that okay feel free to be able to do whatever you want with this. This is your quilt. It is not mine, it is yours. So Janet, thank you so much for sending me that picture. And and, and I was a friend, I cut off whoever's legs they were. <laughs> now, what I'm gonna be showing is the blanket stitch and how I go around raw edge applique. I want you to appreciate my camera setup. So here is what I am sewing around so that you can see on my machine. John found this, this thing is suction cupped to my machine. I pray it doesn't screw up the rose gold because that's the reason I bought this machine, if you can believe it. Um, but you're gonna be able to see exactly what is going on. Look at that, fabulous. A plus John, A plus for that. But first, um, let me see, where do we go to participate in the tool school tomorrow? YouTube, Facebook, or what? Just, I don't really know where it's being housed. Just go sign up and I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know. Just go sign up and you'll get the information that you knew. Okay, so I gotta, now I don't wanna be looking at this cause now I'm getting completely sidewinded. All right, what I wanna talk about is the setup of my machine. Hey John, it's not letting me go back to me. I need John in here. Hey John. The cameras aren't uh, switching. Oh, technology. I can promise you our, um, our, our, our real shows are much better than this. It's not letting me go back to mine. And I suppose it doesn't really matter. But see, I'm going like this, and I get this. I get everybody's comments. Well, we're just gonna go with the one that's there. But let's talk about what I sew on. I sew on a Bernina 765 all right now i know everybody in the world does not have a bernina and you're going to have to listen to how i do it and then adapt it to your machine okay so first of all 
The first thing you're going to want to do is, you know, I can take that off my face now because it's not going to go back on my face. Um, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to switch out your throat plate. You can see in the uh, right hand side, it's a single hole. No, you want to make sure you've got your wider throat plate or you're going to break a needle. Then on my machine, I use a number 20D. It's an embroidery foot. It's open and so I can see what the heck is going on. <clears throat> and I want to show you the bottom of this foot because again, I don't know the other machines, all right? But on the 20D, it's got this kind of beveled out area and that accepts all the fancy stitches. So whatever brand you're using, go look for a foot that looks something like this. I think most importantly, I love that it is an open toe in the front. Let me get rid of that, that, okay? And you'll see why that's important to me in a moment. Then if you're working on a Bernina and it has dual feed and you put on the D foot, if you do not engage it with the dual feed, it's going to act absolutely naughty. So make sure that if you have any Bernina feet that have D, that you engage the dual feed. And I will tell you, I forget this all the time. And I'm like going, what the heck is wrong with my machine? Oh no, it's me that's got the problem. Now on my machine, I'm going to go over to the blanket stitch area. On, on this machine, they have what I call the quilter's playground, and you can see it right there. I click onto that, and then there are a ton of stitches that the Swiss guys think that we want as quilters. So I am into the quilter's playground now. Also, if you have a Bernina and it has dual feed and all these features, you may want to go back and watch this again. So. 1329 is a single blanket stitch. 1330, which is right below it to the left, is a double blanket stitch. I learned from Ricky Timms that if it takes a minute to do the single blanket stitch, it's going to take three minutes to do the double blanket stitch. He loves the double blanket stitch. I love the single one. Now, when I touch that, this is what happens. It comes on, uh, comes on my screen so I can see what the heck is going on. What I love to do is to then move the foot to the right or the, the needle to the right. And that way I can use the interior of that foot. See, that's why I like it, the open toe as my guide. I don't think Ricky does that, um, but I do it. And back in the day, I don't think Libby Lehman did that either, but I need all the help I can get. Then the next thing I do, okay, that's when I'm going to stitch. Okay. And I will stitch for you today, but then on the top row in the quilters playground, there is this stitch. I don't even know what it is, but it is, um, I take it. Now let's look to the left-hand side of the screen. I move that stitch all the way to the right of the foot again, and then I take it down to 0.05. And so basically I end and start with that as my tie off. I don't care so much for the ones that not, okay? I don't care for the, that thing, and I don't even know where it is on my machine, but I basically toggle back and forth between these two stitches, all right? So I believe it's time for me to sew. I just think that's so weird that I can't get back to the original camera. Oh, technology. Again, you gotta love it, you gotta hate it. Oh, there I am. I just pulled down the thing. Ah! So here we go. Oh, by the way, I see Matt Mankey. I see my nephew. I see you there. I see you watching. Poor, poor kid. He and um, his fiance were supposed to get married this August and it doesn't look like it's going to happen. So they're putting off the wedding for a year. So when I was talking to him or texting, he goes, yeah, I'm watching you on this. And I thought, oh my gosh, you must be bored out of your mind. Um, he's on furlough right now. Okay. So here we go. These are, I can't, I got back now. Okay. These are the, come on. These are the shapes I'm going to do. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do a point and then I'm going to show you how to do a boob crack right in there. All right. So, and I'll show you how to do, do this other stuff too. So John's coming in here. Now that's making me nervous. What's No, I know. I know because I couldn't read. I, oh. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be playing with my screen while we're doing this. And what I'm going to do is you can see how I'm bringing this all the way, this little leaf shape, all the way to the inside edge of the right-hand side. And what I'm going to do is I have, I'm going to take a couple little stitches with that top one. Okay, I'm, I'm tied down now. And now I'm gonna to toggle over to my blanket stitch. Also, if you have a hover mode on your machine, you may want it. Look at how that is. But on the Bernina, it only works if you're, if you have it in the hover mode, get out your manual and find it. Um, you have to have the needle down position for it to do it. If I stop with the needle up, well, let me take a stitch there. If I stop with it up, it doesn't lift. So the needle has to be down to make that work. Okay, that looks crappy. Okay, so let me go back and tie this off again. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going like this. I'll make sure you can see, yeah. And I'm using a gray thread. Now, the ticket when you're doing this, let's say it was a real sharp, uh, a small circle. If I have to move my applique in order to go around the shape I always move it when I'm in the outside area like right here if you move it when you're inside like here you're gonna get a weird V the other thing I learned on the quilt show.com I think I learned it from um, Pat Holly and this is so simple but wherever this back bar is that is the direction your stitch is going to go. So if I go like that, I know that's where my stitch is gonna go. It would be crooked. So here we go. I absolutely love this. It was so funny, John was setting up the TQS thing and he said, well, I said, make sure you say machine blanket stitch. And he goes, we well, nobody does it by hand. Oh, yes, they do. <laughs> so here I am coming down to the tip. My prayer is that I can take a stitch that's just exactly like this in, all right? The great thing is, is this camera is covering the holder, so I'm not quite sure what you see. Okay, I'm gonna just hold, hold, kind of hold it back a little bit. I'm pulling it. There we go. Now I'm going to take my little stitch up. Now I'm gonna turn it. That was okay. It's really, I mean, you're not gonna get them right all the time or even close to all the time, but it's kind of fun to, to see if you can nail it. Again, hey, let's put on the, let's put on the um, double blanket stitch for grins, all right? Let me get this up so you can see the difference. Now I'm gonna to have to move it all the way to the right. Okay, here we go. So you can see why if one takes one minute, the other, this one would take longer. Oh my God, this is so much fun. I can't wait till I can actually work on, hey, let's see if I can nail the end of it, doing the double. I'm not good at this. See, what this is gonna do is that it's gonna make your thread work look, oh, two, one, two, one. Okay. Ricky actually dances on stage when he's showing this. One, two, ha, ah! Shoot, I'm gonna pull back. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna let Ricky Tims be the expert on this, not me. <laughs> I've learned so much working with him, and I would like to say he has from me. Okay, so now I want to end it. I'm going to go back to that full 
stitch that I altered and just go like that, cut it, and there you go. Okay, so let's look at the difference. I don't know, you pick which one you like, right? It's all a matter of choice. The other thing is when you're looking, when you're working with your threads, your threads can also be an accent color. In the olden days when we did hand, we um, would often do the blanket stitch in black and that kind of gives it a funky country look to the whole thing. So now I'm gonna go, let's go do a boob crack, okay? Let's see, I'm gonna start it. John, it makes me nervous when you're in here. Why are you in here? Oh, that's some questions, okay. Oh, the stitch width, again, in this case, it's default, and it's a 2.6. I didn't, I didn't alter the blanket stitch stuff at all. I just altered the one that I start and stop with, and that's a 0.05. Keep bringing those questions in, John. Okay, so now see here, I really do have to adjust a little bit. So you do it from the outside. A little circle is where you get really good at this. You know, I used, I mean, I bought a Bernina. Okay, look at how it's getting funky now. I should have turned it. I bought a Bernina because of its knee lift, but this um, hover mode is fabulous, and I know it's not an exclusive on Bernina. Okay, though I do love my machine. Okay, I'm coming down to the boob crack. Yay! Okay, you can see that I got it. Can you see? I can't see on this camera. And I'm gonna go straight it down. And then I'm gonna turn it. Okay, stop. And I mean, do I always nail it? No. It's kinda like, do I always nail my quarter inch? No. Oh, shoot. And maybe if your machine has a speed control, you turn it down a little bit so you don't do what I just did. So basically, you've got straight lines when you do this, you have curved lines, you have points, and you have boob cracks. There we go. Okay. Nice, I got it right on the corner. Um, another option, yeah, no, I'm gonna go in. There we go. I'm gonna take it all the way to the end so we can really look at it. Now on my flowers, uh, the stems are really, really skinny and I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do about that. To be quite honest, I may just sew down on each side and call it a day. There's that. And cut. Another question? John's in here watching. Do you wanna do this? Here, contrasting thread color. Yeah, I just talked about that. Um, you can you can blend it or you can contrast it. Well, they're saying so that they can see. Oh no, but I did do contrasting. John says it so you could see what I'm doing. I don't. Oh, sorry. That's pretty good. Okay, so let me get back to this. If you have other questions, um, you can stick them to me, John. If there's any other questions right now, bring them on. Okay. Also back here, you can see. Um, that peach and that green, I'm thinking about doing that for my binding. Uh, part of it green, part of it peach. I do that a lot of times and I'll talk about that later. But what I would like for you to do, now we're gonna kinda get into the Wild West here a little bit. Uh, probably what I'll be spending my day today doing is blanket stitching my flower pot thing, okay? Um, I will show on Wednesday tricks I do when I get multiple seams together so that you don't end up with these big Audi belly buttons. And I will also talk about, I discovered a trick for uh, sewing half square triangles. So in the meantime, I would get done the blocks that you want done. I would work on my applique, uh, arranging it. And it's not easy, you guys. It took me a lot, a lot of time to do, okay? 
Um, and I mean, I worked on it for four or five days to get it the way I wanted. Then the other ticket is I'm going to applique, machine applique as much as I can before I sew the whole thing together. It's a lot easier to maneuver that center square around than the entire quilt. Now, the couple of the B's are going to be on the sew line, and so I will have to do those after. And fortunately, this is not a huge quilt, but that's how I typically do applique quilts. I do what I can do before I sew it together, all right? And then tomorrow, again, John, are there any other questions? Top thread, uh, top thread weight? That my top thread weight that I'm using is I'm using my quilting thread that is a 60 weight, which is finer than the 50 weight you might have in your top. But um, I, when I'm, do, great question. When I'm doing raw edge applique, I would not put the 80 weight on top. It's too fine. I use the 80 weight on top when I'm doing finished applique. But you can, uh, but in my bobbin, I always, always, always have the 80 weight. Stabilizer on the background fabric? Stabilizer on the background fabric. Fabulous question, and of course Quilter Select has it, but the only time I put stabilizer on the back is if the stitches start to bubble, like say in a um, satin stitch, all right? But because you've got this uh, fusible on the back, and it's a heavy duty fusible, that kind of works as your stabilizer, all right? These are great questions, you guys. And a lot of this will be covered tomorrow with Judy. Again, Judy Fredenberg is going to be presenting, but I'm going to be you guys tomorrow. I'm going to be in the bleachers. And there's also going to be um, some other educators on there, and we're able to answer questions. Because as you know, now that I've got J John employed here, I, I can't answer questions while I'm presenting. It's just that's too big of a squirrel in my backyard. Another one? We just said, what's the pattern for the flower? It's, oh. It's just embroidery. The pattern for the flower is uh, a fabric line by Moda. So it's kind of like doing a broidery purse like this. This is just some that I had cut out. It's like a broidery purse and then I just cut around it. And this is where I got my bees also. I kind of cheated, but I figure because I'm making the quilt twice, I have liberties. And I'm gonna say again, in yours, let's look at the original. In yours, you can put something completely different in the middle if you want. I mean, maybe you like pussy willows. Maybe you like, maybe you want to do a house because of the whole quarantine thing. I mean, that is your playground to do whatever you want to do. So again, sign up before tomorrow for the free um, school, tool school. Go to thequiltshow.com, get in there, sign up, and then you're going to be good to go. Again, 10 o'clock Pacific time, another one, and one o'clock. This, yes, this is raw edge applique. It is not finished applique. Those are co two completely different beasts, all right? And what's really cool is when our master class gets into applique, we're gonna be going over all different kinds of applique. The other thing is a lot of you, sometimes when I'm standing over there, there's a circle quilt behind me, it's called the six or seven minute circle. It's pieced. That will be in this next Sunday's class. My friend Dale Fleming, I demo it, but my friend Dale Fleming came up with this genius. So we're just trying to give you a broad variety. Um, as I wrap this up, I'm gonna say, after the first season of Simply Quilts, where we did 13 shows, I thought there's not enough out there to do more shows, okay? Well, Simply Quilts had 500 episodes. The Quilt Show now has over 300. That's 800 episodes on in, in my life, in my life on quilting. For you guys, you've got 300 and something, and this is what I know. Ricky always says it's and both, all right? And there's about 25 different ways to bake a pie. It just depends who the creator is. And I've learned so much, and you you know, you know sometimes I'll, I will, um, I'll watch a show and I'll go, maybe this isn't what I want to do, but at least I know it's what I don't want to do. And I might learn something that completely changes my paradigm of, I could try that. And then I, it changes, it changes how I do things. What I discovered on Sunday on doing these crazy little half square triangles, I called up my friend Robin and I said, okay, just tell me, am I the only person in the world that doesn't do this? And she said, I've never thought of it. So I'm pretty excited about that. And I love that I have a 
I have a pot coming out of my hand. <laughs> so anyways, you guys have a great, great Memorial Day. Stay safe. And again, be kind to yourself. We're, we're earning it, man. We are earning it going through this. Have a good one. Bye.